Hey everyone, this is Javier Valbar here for InscapeDigital.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at using actual 3D objects in the particle simulator within HitFilm 3 Pro. The example I'm going to be creating today is a fleet of biplanes, but you can use this technique for things like an asteroid field in space or even a cityscape of buildings. To get started, I'm going to create a new composite shot, and first thing I'll do is import the 3D model that I'll be using for the particles. This is a biplane model I got from TurboSquid, but obviously you can use whatever model you choose. Once it loads, I can look at it from all angles and make sure that all the textures and everything looks good. The only thing I'm going to change here is the wheel color because for some reason it's purple. I'll do that by heading over to the materials tab, finding the relevant material and changing its diffuse color. I'll hit OK and now the model is a media asset we can use later. Next drag the particle simulator from the effects panel onto the timeline. Create a camera from the new layer panel and now you have your default simulation. Now in order to get the particles to move like a fleet, set the shape under the emitter settings to cube. This means that all of the particles will spawn at any area inside the cube shape, which we'll adjust right now. Let's go ahead and make the cube bigger by adjusting the height, width, and depth. And again, these options are up to you depending on how you want your group of planes to look. Right now the particles are spawning and dying quickly, so we need to have them stay alive for the duration of the shot and stop new ones from suddenly appearing. Under General, change the time shift to negative one second. This makes the particles already appear on screen when the shot starts. Move your timeline to the first frame and keyframe the particles per second property. Move forward one frame and change this to zero. This prevents any new particles from appearing. To get the particles to move in one direction, change the trajectory to cone. You can set the angle with the Y rotation property. I set mine to 90 degrees. The radius property controls how off course the particles go when they move. Keeping it at zero will make the particles move in a straight line. I set this to two or three for a little bit of randomness. So now that the movement of our particles is the way we want, let's make them actually look like our 3D model. Drag the model from the media panel onto the timeline, and hide it from view by clicking the eye symbol to the left of the name. Back under the particle settings under appearance, Set the texture source to layer and the source layer to the model. Keep in mind that any position or rotation changes that you make to the original model layer will affect the particles. To make all the models have the same color as the original, set the color source to texture color. At this point you have the basic setup for your fleet of biplanes. You can change things like speed or rotations per second in the particle systems options, depending on your project. But now you need a background to put them against, one that reacts to camera movement in a realistic way. I have this picture of storm clouds here, I'll import that and drag it below everything else. Apply the environment map viewer effect, and you can see that it wraps the picture 360 degrees in 3D space. For this certain picture, I'll set the scale to 50% and the scale ratio to 2. These options adjust how the picture is stretched in your scene, so they'll be different for other images that you might use. If I use the orbit camera tool here, you can see that the sky background moves in a realistic way, that gives the impression that it makes up the sky behind the planes. Let's make this scene a little bit more realistic. Adding a light from the new layer panel affects every single one of the models. You can use only one light if you're going for deeper shadows and a more dramatic look, or you can use multiple lights positioned at different intervals to get a more evenly lit scene. If you have lightning in your scene, you can also keyframe the intensity to move up and down. Now I'll add a grade on top of everything. First effect I'll add is shake. I tend to turn the amount and speed down to get a calmer look. Then I'll add Glow with a high threshold and radius. Threshold is a setting that you see in a lot of effects, and what it does is set a minimum requirement that an element in your video must meet before the effect gets applied. So in this case, a high threshold on the Glow effect means that only the brightest parts of the video will receive the Glow. Radius simply means how much the effect is spread or feathered. On top of that, I added Lens Dirt. To help the planes blend better, add the Light Wrap effect directly onto the particle simulation and set the source layer to the clouds. This takes the color and light from the cloud layer and bleeds it onto the edges of the planes, helping them blend better against the background. This light wrap effect is frequently used for chroma key effects. Some other elements to help with realism include 3D rain, which might need positioning and resizing to cover the whole area. There's also the rain on glass effect, which adds visible raindrops on the camera lens. And now at this point, it's just a matter of your personal style for how you want the final product to look. Check out my World War I VFX short to see how I use this effect. And if you like this tutorial, be sure to subscribe to my channel for future hit film videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial.